I've been thinking a lot about the Norse god Vidar, and I want to do a painting of Vidar. And so I started doing some research, and the first thing you find is that there's actually, there's not a whole lot of information on Vidar. It's brought to my attention that the proper pronunciation is Vidar, not Vidar. I didn't know this at the time I made the recording, so you may hear me go back and forth between saying Vidar and Vidar, but Vidar is the correct pronunciation. So what, what do we know? Well, in, in the prose Edda, it says the following, that, that High foretells that during Ragnarok, the wolf Fenrir will devour Odin. Vidar will avenge him by stepping down with one foot on the lower jaw of the monster, grabbing his upper jaw in one hand and tearing his mouth apart, killing him. Vidar's thick shoe is described as consisting of all the extra leather pieces that people have cut from their shoes at the toe and the heel, collected by the god throughout all time. Therefore, anyone who is concerned enough to give assistance to the gods should throw these pieces away. That's not a lot to go on. I mean, so far we've established that he, he revenges Odin. He, he seeks vengeance against Odin's death, his father's death, and uh, that he has a really big shoe that he uses to crush Fenrir's jaw. Now, in, in the Poetic Edda, it, it says in, in uh, the Voluspa, which is, uh, you know, the poems all about the, the end times, the, the, the foretold. And uh, in the Poetic Edda, it says, Brushwood grows and high grass widely in Vidar's land, and there the sun proclaims on his horse's back that he's keen to avenge his father. Again, we have the concept of vengeance, and the reason there is high grass in his area is because a man whose mind is set to vengeance does not plow his field. So that would account for the high grass. Uh, now, <clears throat> we have a few more information when we get to the kinnings that, that describe uh, Vidar. He's, he's been described... Uh, well, first, first let's, do, let's do his name. His name, Vidar, the best translation from Old Norse that scholars can come up with is, is Wide Ruler. Um, and it's been suggested too that this this relates to the fact that he can he can step uh, a great distance. Uh, perhaps he has a wide step or a long step, or just you know the power to crush a wolf's jaw with his step. Uh, he's also called the Silent Ace, possessor of the Iron Shoe, enemy and slayer of Fenris Wolf, the God's Avenging Ace, Father's Homestead Inhabiting Ace the son of Odin, brother of the Aesir, and sometimes referred to it as Vidar the Silent. Now, it's the silence that, that I found the most interesting when trying to interpret Vidar and, and really understanding why. And the, the, the suggestion I like the most is that it's a vow of silence, that upon learning of, of the wolf attack, uh, that the wolf will kill his father, he swears an oath not to speak until the wolf is destroyed. Um, and so the more and more I thought about this, I, I started to get excited about, about the idea of, you know, him having like this huge iron boot. I mean, he's the possessor of the iron shoe. And in a modern illustration, that doesn't have to be as simple as just a big boot. I mean, it was just like an awesome, like magic robot boot, uh, that he used to crush things with. And so from there, that began to, to clue in other aspects of the, the illustration for me. Once I conquered that first thing, how do you how do you show silence without just you know you can't do his mouth sewn shut. If his mouth is sewn shut, everybody thinks of the story of Loki. Um, and so, how do be another way? And so, I, more and more, I was drawn to the idea that his mouth was bound by his oath. And so, in my picture, I have a, a bolt that's been locked around Vidar's mouth. And hanging from the bolt is a fist, and inside that fist is an oath ring, a visual representation of our oaths. Uh, I also managed then that, that Vidar would get involved with either tattooing or perhaps scarification because he couldn't communicate uh, verbally. He would communicate in other ways. He'd want people to know what he was about. So I came up with the idea that he would have the Elder Futhark runes carved into his chest, and that he could either point to them to express himself, or perhaps they glow. I mean, he Vidar is a god, after all, so who, who knows how he would use them. But I liked the idea of, of the runes being implanted on his chest. 
Uh, other symbols that, that you know, go throughout, uh, you know, dragons and the ravens, um, horns and you know, the, the sort of things you might expect to see from a, a Nordic warrior, but also a son of Odin. You know, the ravens uh, tie him into the house of, of Odin, symbols of the wolf uh, and, and the dragon often appeared. Uh, specifically, the dragon appeared on the head, the wolf again, the wolf tying to Odin. Uh, and, and so since Vidar doesn't specifically have his, his own animal that we would be, could be clued into, um, I, I borrowed the idea that he would, he would bear the animals of his house and of his lineage. So with all these things in mind, uh, I started to get a very different picture than I first had of Vidar. I just thought of it as this goofy story about a big shoe. But then I started to think about, you know, what, what does Vidar represent? I mean, how many of us have taken oaths or given our word and been bound by that in a way that was uncomfortable. You know, how often do you not speak uh, either either the truth or or openly uh, because you've you've taken an oath? I mean, even the oath that we have uh, to our spouses and to our children often force us to hold our tongues. And so, seeing Vidar as an allegory for uh, the the weight of our deeds and our oaths to me starts to create a very interesting picture. That's that's where I started to get excited about Vidar. In, in addition to that element, I, I looked to, you know, what, what are some of the heathens now doing in honor of Vidar? And I was told a story that a, a kindred had, had done a bloat in honor of Vidar, and uh, they brought old shoes. <laughs> And uh, the, the shoes were, were blessed and, and a part of the ritual, everyone had, had given a pair of old shoes. But in the end, the shoes were taken and then given to charity. And I thought, oh man, what a, what a wonderful concept that, you know, we, we honor our oaths and oaths to one another, but, but can help the community at large as well. And, and it kind of lends a little credence to that, you know, in, in helping our community, we're not just fulfilling our oaths, but we're helping Vidar, the, the cosmic oath fulfiller, to fulfill his oath as well. And in that way, we participate in the circle, in the mystery that is both oath-taking and fulfilling of the oath. And, you know, it's never a bad thing to, to help when you're able to. I'm not saying give away perfectly good shoes that you're going to wear every day, but if you have some old shoes that you're not using, perhaps uh, you as an individual or your kindred might think of, of doing a bloat in honor of Vidar. I also think it's important to think about vengeance in the old sense, too, that this, this is not simple vengeance for a, a wrongdoing or a slight. You know, it's, it's more the idea in, in the, the older sense, in the traditional sense, in the tribal heathen society of, of Weregild, that when a member of your family was killed, if justice could not be sought through, through payment or another means, then it was left to the family to avenge. And so uh, Vidar represents his family's obligation as well, not just the oath that he personally took, but, but the role of the family that you know, it, it falls to the children to fulfill the, the work and the deeds of the parents. So as you can see, like, then suddenly Vidar starts to come to life uh, in a rich way. It made me wish there was a lot more on Vidar, not, not just the concept of, of his oath, but I'd love to have uh, animal connections beyond his familial ties and, and even the sword of Vidar that, that in some stories it ends with him stabbing the wolf through the heart after breaking his jaw. And what, what does Vidar's sword uh, represent or, or what legends might have arose around Vidar's sword? Uh, one other interesting thing about Vidar is that he survives unscathed Ragnarok, and along with Thor's sons, uh, they rebuild and, and become a part of, of the new pantheon. The, you know, the cycle uh, begins again. Uh, I think there's potential for an interesting story there about uh, Vidar and, and Balder and the sons of Thor, um, but, but that's a, probably a tale for another day. For now, I'd like to tell you a story about what I came to understand Vidar, the Vidar that appears in this painting that I've done, in this, in this picture. Among the Aesir, there is one called Vidar, the wide stepper, possessor of the iron shoe, the silent one. Upon learning that his father, Odin, 
would be killed by the great devouring wolf Fenris, Vidor swore an oath of vengeance. His oath, the last words that he would speak until the beast was slain. Those who honor Vidar and his oath give away their old shoes to those in need, as well as the scraps left over from making new shoes. They're thrown away in honor of Vidar. Vidar takes this energy that his followers give and use it to construct his great boot. At Ragnarok, Vidar will kill the great wolf by taking his massive boot and stepping down on the wolf's jaw until it breaks. Then Vidar will end the wolf with his blade straight through the heart. Only then will Vidar speak again, and with the sons of Thor, he will bring about a new golden age. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts on Vidar and gained a new appreciation for the Silent God. I know I really enjoyed uh, doing the research and coming to understand Vidar in ways that I, I never did before. Um, and I enjoyed making the painting, and I, I hope you enjoy checking it out. If you'd like to see more of my work from my Norse mythology series, you can go to FatefulSigns.com. Uh, we're going to close today by saying, Hail Vidar!